Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at nuclear fusion power. So let's dive right into it. So what it is, is very simple. It's E equal to mc square. Many of you know about this guy known as Einstein and this equation, the most famous scientific equation there is E equal to mc square. Is there a use of it? Yes, nuclear power relies on it. And what is actually happening is like, you must have heard this many time again, time and time again, that you cannot create energy nor destroy it. However, energy can exist in different states. One of that state is matter itself. So this is what that equation is. The energy content of a matter, like iron, steel, anything, basically energy content of a matter can be extracted and the quantity of energy that you will get is equal to mc square. So m being mass, generally in, if you want to do the calculation is generally done atomic mass unit, very small units and c is constant speed of light and square, square. So it gives you a very large amount of energy for a very little amount of uh, matter. So basically if you can successfully convert even 1 milligram to 500 grams of nuclear fissile material into energy, that's a lot of energy. Like uh, like tons and tons of coal equivalent of energy and then you have to understand the fission that we are referring to it's simply breaking something down if we are breaking it apart we are not building it like fusion we are breaking it apart now generally if you have seen the periodic table on the bottom row there is a lot of heavier elements those elements are almost uh, what you will call unstable now of course not every element there is unstable but if you like let's say take uranium you add one neutron to it and it becomes from 235 to 236 it becomes unstable basically the energy content of it becomes unbalanced it wants to you know stabilize itself like how you heat water up it wants to you know equilibrium reach equilibrium level so it something of that nature happens and then it's like boom splits now while it splits it gives off three neutron and it gives off uh, two remaining elements however very little very little amount of mass is destroyed in this process so that mass you will not able to gain back if you recombine the neutrons and recombine the elements that lost mass is converted into energy that's your source of energy that's what's giving you a lot of heat so if you hear somebody say nuclear bomb gives out too much power that's why it's giving you that much power it's because matter was converted into energy not chemical reaction not you know spring uh, mechanical reaction it's simply matter itself was converted into energy so how does nuclear power plant work well there are very simple stages of it there are four core stages you take the fuel fissile material it could be anything it could be uranium it could be plutonium it could be thorium however be mindful the fuel used in nuclear power plants are very low enriched basically they only refine it up to 20 percent to weapons grade uranium as you keep hearing in spy spy movies and all that is like weapons grade uranium what does that mean it's simply the quantity of fissionable uh, fissile uranium is very high as in like what you mine out of the ground is very little like uh, if you take one ton you'll barely get one kg that is fissile. We do a lot of process of refining it to make it more fissile. And what we put in the nuclear reactor, as you can see in this, few, uh, what we call fuel rod, they are only refined to 20%. So inherently, no nuclear power plant can go kaboom. Because to make kaboom, we actually put something upwards of 80 to 90% uh, you know, refined uh, uranium. So so if any if you see any movie where they are saying nuclear power plant gonna go boom yes it can explode but the explosion would be either steam explosion water explosion but it won't be a nuclear explosion because inherently the fuel used is very uh, you know uh, well, i would say dirty because it's not refined enough and if you're like what if somebody put the you know put a dirty fuel the moment they put it it will blow up so unless somebody is trying to commit suicide uh, i don't think it's doable then we take the fuel we put it in a reactor as you can see there are hundreds and thousands of reactor design now one you have to be mindful the most common design is what's called pressure water reactor 
what does it simply do is basically as you can realize nuclear reaction is very hot it can easily go up to three to five hundred degrees celsius now you might be like okay that's not very hot you have to imagine uh, three to four hundred degrees celsius of ten thousand liter of water that's a lot of joule and the the bigger the pool the basically bigger the reactor mass that 300 degrees celsius represents a lot of energy and you are cooling it it's not like you know if you let it stay, stay there, of course the water is going to boil off some point or another. But to make sure that water does not boil off because it's above 100 degrees Celsius, what we do is pressurize it. Once we pressurize this to whatever PSI is needed, uh, once you pressurize it, it reaches a point where it will not boil off even though it's above 100 degrees Celsius. It happens on uh, sea floor also where you can see the uh, volcanic uh, undersea volcano the water there is not uh, boiling off simply because of the pressure so if you have a lot of psi in your water it will take a lot of energy like to boil off water in this sort of scenario you have to heat it up to like 600 to 700 degrees celsius now the reactor can easily go that hot however we are taking that heat away that's the whole point of running water into the system now we take that heat away and generally we run it through what's called steam cycle as you can see by these things uh, you will see this in coal power plant, in gas fired power plant, in nuclear power plant, they are the same. This is just taking heat, turning it into a steam, steam to mechanical work by a generator, from generator to electricity and that's it. So from heat part it's completely similar. However, uh, most power plants will generally don't have to worry about anything other than this part. But because nuclear power plants, as I told you, it creates two elements those two elements are very idiotically radioactive as in dangerously radioactive as in it will kill you in hours so they also have to figure out how they're gonna handle the waste as of now we do not have any proper way of handling this waste so what are the dangers of nuclear reactor first danger is it's weaponizing now you might be like okay as i already said the the reactor itself uses very low grade fuel however the technology needed to reach that point is inherently more complex than what you need for a weapon so if you can make a nuclear reactor you can make a nuclear bomb and you can use what's called a enriching process where you will take something that is non-feasible and you will make it feasible and you can use that in your bombs and you can make plutonium plutonium is a man-made element it's not naturally occurring you cannot just go and mine plutonium you have to mine uranium make it into plutonium then uh, you know you can use that into a bomb so that's why the weaponizing potential of a nuclear reactor is ludicrously high so that's why people uh, like america russia and all that they don't want uh, every other country to have nuclear power plant because inherently the technology needed for bombs and power plants are same inherently and you have to understand if you commit a mistake while you're making a nuclear power plant or uh, like chernobyl there is no fixing it like dams are also very dangerous like when dam collapses it can kill 60 70 thousands of people and destroy millions and millions of uh, property damage but it over time it fixes here it there is no fixing it you have to get it right in the first go if you screw it up there is no fixing it and the consequence this is the most horrifying part like as i told you if a dam goes down you, you can have a scenario where you have catastrophic damage however it will not be for centuries nuclear power plant will be like for thousands of years so if this is so dangerous so difficult what are the pros of it the pros is that it is independent from environment like let's say take example of india india gets a very sizable chunk of its energy from hydroelectricity now as many of you know hydroelectricity is directly dependent on glaciers and rain basically if you have too little rain your power plant is not producing enough but if your glacier shrinks beyond a certain point yeah your power plant is not gonna like your hydro dam is not gonna provide power so being independent from environment is very crucial this also helps it to place you can place this nuclear reactor wherever you want like wherever like in middle of nowhere in the sea or like you know in the middle of desert you can do whatever you want with it it's location independent then we come to the fact the most dangerous aspect of our power generation is greenhouse emission as you can see this is if you see those uh, very big stacks those are cooling stacks they don't uh, emit uh, what you call exhaust the exhaust we will see always see a very slim pipe and it will be very tall the chimney the exhaust will be coming out from one so if you see uh, those uh, big things those are cooling tower those are not exhaust chambers this is from exhaust chamber so they give out carbon dioxide now inherently carbon dioxide itself is not dangerous however if you put enough of it in your atmosphere it will create a cascade reaction basically temperature will first go of one degree up two degree up 
treat area then methane that is trapped into everything like uh, in for case of humanity in case of our earth is trapped in what we call permafrost basically once that leaks into atmosphere methane is so dangerous it makes a greenhouse effect of co2 looks like a child it's 20 times more powerful than that that will trap more heat releasing more CO2, releasing more methane that is trapped everywhere and will keep burning more power plant over, over a period of time as quick as uh, 100 years to 200 years we will reach a point where we will no, no longer able to grow crops simply the temperatures will be too hot for any crops to grow our seas will be acidified to a point where uh, all sea life will be destroyed now not because uh, you know that water became acidic it's simply because the coral reef like you know the feeding block of the basically lowest level of the food chain will be destroyed now once you destroy the base of a food chain the whole food chain collapses same will happen like we won't die simply because the earth became a bit hot we will die simply because we no longer can grow crop at the same rate and you're like okay we're gonna do greenhouse greenhouse makes it hotter not colder so for that reason this is a very dangerous like nuclear power plant does not damage the planet this damages the planet and you have to understand every power plant technology that i have discussed wind solar all those things they have a limitation because they cannot act as a base load power supply basically you cannot uh, go to a power company and like this is my reactor this is going to give you let's say 100 megawatt of power 24 into 7 into 365 into 5 6 years you cannot do that with solar you cannot do that with wind however with this you can do that even in dam like hydropower plants uh, they have to be very big reservoir just for that reason so they have a contingency let's say you know rain happens a little less this year they can handle it but of course again even this uh, power plants are also breaking down in california dams are also you know losing their power because of the drought so for all things com combined this can provide continuous uninterrupted power now what are the cons of the situation cons is very simple you have to realize the fission itself is not that big of a deal however the elements that it create those are idiotically dangerous and of course depending on the reaction you are using either you are using plutonium or uranium or thorium whatever you're using the outcome will vary however in all scenarios they come out very radioactively dangerous the best can we hope for is it's only going to be radioactive for 1000 years suffice to say suffice to say no empire has lasted that long so if you bury something like, like this sort of thing you bury it somewhere 1000 years ago uh, let's say passes and somebody redigs it for any reason let's say uh, you know somebody forgot they redig it boom it's still dangerous and it has no tolerance for mistake like if you mess up a solar power plant the worst you can do is damage the grid if you mess up a wind turbine the worst you can do is like you know collapse that wind turbine itself but nothing inherently you know self destructive but if you do screw up like this this is fukushima system suffice to say it's very very dangerous and human stupidity is the core aspect of it now i specified that nuclear power plant cannot go boom because the fuel itself is you know uh, not enriched enough to have a runaway chain reaction it can sustain a chain reaction but not have the technology to go runaway chain reaction. then you would say okay what happened in three mile island human stupidity control uh, basically somebody forgot the pump was uh, you know overfeeding not underfeeding it's a very very serious reason why the heck that happened it's like uh, the keys they have in the nuclear power plant the old analog system where they had keys for it they had a tag a long tag for it that tag covered a light that was saying low coolant uh, low coolant they did not realize there was low coolant and if they had just turned it off everything would have been good but that was human error as i told you there is no tolerance for mistake three mile island accident happened after that uh, we come to uh, chernobyl the worst nuclear disaster that ever happened now chernobyl after the detail came out after the fall of uh, soviet union once every single detail has been passed up people were surprised this reactor even worked for that long the amount of cost cutting was done to that was idiotically cruel i would say like because many of you know there is a, something known as geiger counter it tells the radiation level so everything is good every nuclear power plant should have lot of geiger counters awesome yes dear and uh, they have what's called mounted geiger counters basically the geiger counter won't be moving it will be mounted to let's say wall chamber walls reactor walls things like that it will be mounted so you get a very accurate picture you can't uh, because if somebody is let's say bring out a ceramic tile it's gonna be you know be very radioactive to make sure they're getting constant reading they put it uh, they generally put 
uh, Geiger counters everywhere around in surrounding the reactor and the power plant. They did not put a Geiger counter that that goes high. Basically, if you have a Geiger counter, there is a rating 0 to 10. Now, 0 to 10 was safe for humans, so they did not put a Geiger counter that could go 0 to 50. So basically, the best uh, when the explosion happened, when the uh, the steam, the water coolant system failed. Basically, they are no longer giving fresh water or cold water. It starts to boil off. And then when it's boiling off, it gets very hot because nuclear reactor is very hot. I told you it's 300 degrees Celsius because we are constantly feeding it. Now, once you don't feed it, it goes as high as three to 4,000 degrees Celsius. Now, once that happens, what's uh, happening is something similar to electrolysis. And given the fact that control rods that they were using had a specific property, if you mix it with water at that high temperature, it's gonna split water and oxygen apart. It's almost like electrolysis. Consequence, it's gonna combine again and boom. That's what happened in Chernobyl. That's why you, you can still see the building intact because steam exploded. The water uh, explosion was more or less like a rocket explosion, not nuclear explosion. There was no nuclear explosion. The danger, the damage, the harm to people came from the fact that they did not even build a containment chamber because inherently when you build a nuclear reactor, you know that it could blow up. So you will build a chamber that will either seal it or will not allow radioactive particle to you know shoot off in the atmosphere. It failed miserably in Chernobyl. Then we come to Fukushima. Again, Fukushima was so stupid because when Chernobyl came out, when people actually looked at it after the panic was ended, people were like, you know, this was a miracle that it lasted this long. So the idea uh, came to people's mind that it will not happen in Europe. It will not happen in the first world country simply because we have much higher safety standards. And that was true. This was running for 40, 50 years. Now, problem with uh, Fukushima is that when there is a commission of people, a lot of people uh, sign in to that commission and they go around every reactor in the world that is civilian operated and they check its safety and all and they give you a recommendation like do this or do that they went to fukushima and they're like everything is good but your seawall basically the, they were seaside uh, the seawall was not high enough they told him please increase the height of the seawall it's a uh, very sharp, like you know not hot high enough a tsunami can easily you know flood this side and all their backup reactor uh, backup reactor i'm saying backup generator which were uh, they had 40 backup generator one or two should be more than enough to run the system in backup mode but they had 40 awesome here's the all the 40 was in one place and all of the 40 were in a place that it could be flooded so they got a letter like a written letter from the commission of nuclear safety that please do this because this is a vulnerability they said uh, we've been doing this for 40 years we know what we are doing and tada it exploded now this was a very well built reactor that's why we did not uh, have the same level of catastrophe as chernobyl chernobyl still is the worst thing and this could have been saved if they simply had uh, backup generators uh, in you know placed different different places places where it cannot be flooded putting all of them in a place where it can be flooded was stupid on steroid so these are the cons of it now what do we see in the future is very simple it's gonna be crucial for mars project now we cannot go to mars on solar power alone we need nuclear power specifically if we're gonna be there on the surface so flat out if humanity is to go to mars they need nuclear power no discussion about it then uh, the reactor you have to understand what we built was very rushed built it was not somebody sat down designed the system then improved that design then redesigned no it was just like they come up with a design and everybody ran with it general electric started to sell uh, nuclear reactors as a module like you know you buy this 500 megawatt module 600 megawatt module as soon as the first designs were approved by the commission safety commission there was no improvement done to it so inherently many lame ideas that at the time made sense but you know since now we know more the design of the all the reactors that are operational today is very inherently weak. It's it's like old diesel engines where you know when you started like boom, boom, uh, that kind of old design. But modern diesel engine does not do that. That's the same reason. The design has improved a lot. However, all the reactors that we have operational is not uh, you know those new current generation reactors. So there is a lot of room of improvement in the design factor itself. Then we're gonna use thorium. This element simply because this has lower potential of weaponizing it and the radioactive waste that it gives out can only last for 1000 to 5000 years not 50 to 60 million years not uh, 10000 year or 50000 years so that's the benefit part like if you bury it deep enough the radioactive waste that it creates you can forget about it you can be fairly certain that over time it's not gonna pose a danger to humanity 
and not to mention bill gates is also spending a lot of money into this uh, reactor technology so there are a lot of innovation being done into nuclear reactor technology and i really like the idea of salt reactor simply because as i already told every reactor blows up because water blows up they are removing water with salt and salt has this benefit that it will only remain liquid as long as 300 degrees celsius and some designs are so advanced that they have two reactors one reactor is a your power reactor where is you getting the power second is a emergency dump reactor so as i already told you that what reactor gets hot if you are not running coolant through it so they built a second reactor simply because if meltdown happens in the first reactor which will be on top of the second reactor it will melt the radioactive material will go in the second one and just cool down there that reactor is specifically designed to make sure it uh, radiates as much heat away as possible without causing any serious damage so inherently we can have expect much safer design we are going planning to send it to mars so obviously and uh, thorium so all things considered i think nuclear is going to play a very serious role in our future so this was my presentation on fission power i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please like if you don't didn't uh, don't dislike it but and leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode of science thursdays and please subscribe press the bell icon as i make video every day and as always thanks for watching